Tuberculosis in Myanmar, you're very concerned with that part of the world. What is the situation at the moment? Almost every, um, every country, especially countries that are, uh, have less resources, have an, a, an epidemic in, in tuberculosis. Myanmar in particular has, a, has one that's uh, quite bad. Um, in some areas of the, the country, there's townships that one out of a thousand people have active tuberculosis. And those active cases, if they don't go on treatment, will spread to uh, two, three other people each, you know, each year. And so you can see how the, the epidemic can grow without, without, um, without proper care. Two particular things that, challenge, that add challenges to, to that uh, epidemic in Myanmar are the high rates of MDR, uh, multi-drug resistant tuberculosis, um, which has a significant percent in new cases and cases that are retreatment even a higher percent. Um, and also, um, especially compared to its neighboring countries, has a much bigger HIV epidemic. And those two diseases play off each other. Can I take those in, in reverse order, starting with the HIV? Sure. Uh, what special circumstances does that impose on the way you approach this particular disease? It, it means that we, we, um, anyone who has tuberculosis will look for HIV in them, and the, the prevalence is around 10% of those patients with tuberculosis will actually be HIV infected. And we want to um, treat both diseases when we find them. So it's very important that the patients get on uh, antiretroviral treatment, uh, which can significantly change the course of their disease. And in, in Myanmar right now, that is the, the amount of people that are getting on HIV treatment that need it is way under, uh, under executed. Right, organizationally, uh, how can that be achieved to improve on that very dismal rate? Yeah, I think the, a, a better, uh, a better uh, group of consorted efforts to, uh, with the international community, with the national HIV program and the national TB program, to join together and really try to reach every patient uh, in every township uh, in Myanmar is, is you know, the, our only option, really. Um, and that, that takes significant resources, both from in-country and the government and from externally, too. And also, what data do you have from Myanmar on drug-resistant tuberculosis, then? There's probably about 9,000 cases that arise every year in Myanmar. Um, and uh, much, uh, much less than half of those are actually getting diagnosed. So we're not even diagnosing most of the cases probably that arise. And then even a smaller fraction of those people even that we get diagnosed get on treatment. So it may be even as low as a, th a thousand that you know, get on treatment a year uh, compared to the many, many cases that we're diagnosing. So there's actually a backlog in uh, Myanmar of people waiting treatment that are infectious, can infect other people. So it's quite significant that the numbers and uh, you know, the lack of treatment in, in reaching people right now at this, at this stage. What have you found are the barriers causing that situation of lack of treatment even though you're diagnosed? I think the, you know, we've, we've made a lot of progress in diagnosis. So people are getting diagnosed um, and uh, using a molecular rapid test, um, but the treatment is remains uh, suboptimal. The treatment is just a terrible treatment. It's 20 months long. It's an injectable intramuscular in, uh, for every day for eight months. It, um, the medicines are very toxic. They cause hearing loss, nausea, vomiting, kidney failures, uh, problems with your thyroid. So it's a very toxic treatment. And that, to me, is the biggest barrier. That, uh, and it's expensive. So those, um, even if it was still expensive but wasn't as toxic, it would probably be uptaken much quicker. So what would you say to doctors and other healthcare clinicians dealing with drug-resistant TB right now from your experience that might be of some value? I, I think, you know, throughout the country, the, the National TB Program is trying to scale up MDR-TB treatment everywhere. And many clinicians don't actually aren't quite aware of what those efforts are by the National TB program and how to work the system as well as, well as they can. We are kind of stuck with this suboptimal regimen for a while, but there is good news and there's two uh, 
uh, two new drugs out there. And so my advice to, to, to Myanmar would be to embrace those two new drugs, try to get them incorporated into the new regimen, try to make sure that all clinicians are aware of, um, of, of the treatment that is available through the NTP, and add these new drugs as, as quickly and as safely as we can uh, uh, to. We don't want to lose resistance to those new drugs, so we have to add them in a, in a way that's optimal, we'll say. Uh, finally, in Myanmar, uh, um, um, briefly, what's the take-home message for TB generally, including uh, uh, drug-resistant TB? Uh, I think there's lots of take-home messages, so I just try to rattle them off. One is that we got to get awareness out there with clinicians to suspect TB more often, to suspect drug-resistant TB in TB patients. So we need to have the community aware that, uh, you know, uh, you know, cough and fever and weight loss can be symptoms of TB. They should be checked. We need the clinicians aware that they should do the proper diagnostic test for TB. And then we need to make, make treatment available for both TB and HIV much more widely available. So uh, these, these are things that uh, we can do and we have in countries and we have in Myanmar made great uh, progress in, in rolling these out. But still, we have a long, a long way to go.